We are uh, in this series, continuing our summer series, dealing with the fruit of the Spirit. We've talked about love, and we've talked about joy, and today we are going to look at peace. We're going to look at what it means to be at peace with God, peace with ourselves, and peace with others. I want to tell you this morning, and I said it last week, I'll probably say it from here on out, it is important in this series that we don't need to strive to add more, whatever we're talking about, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. We're not just trying to add that into our lives, right? No, what, what Galatians says is that we're called to yield to the Holy Spirit who produces then in us more of those nine characteristics of the singular fruit of the Spirit. So you may say, Frank, today I don't have peace, so I'm going to work myself up to get uh, more peace. No, that means you're probably going to work yourself up into a lather and have less peace less peace, right? So it's not, it's not that we're, it's not that we're called to like work ourselves up to more joy or more love or more patience. We're called to rest, rest in him, yield to the Holy Spirit who then produces of this, it produces more of the Spirit. And I've said uh, last week, it's uh, not original with me. I think I heard it uh, on a sermon by Alistair Begg, but it's a great picture for you and for me. It's the difference between a fruit tree and a Christmas tree, Right? You get your Christmas tree out and you put all the stuff on the outside of it. You you put the uh, the things that you, uh, you know, the ornaments, you put the tinsel, whatever you put on there, right? Uh, you know, you put all that stuff on there. You put the, you know, the popcorn that you've threaded through the string, right? All that, you put it on there. That's not what this is about. It's not about putting stuff on our lives. It's actually about being more like a fruit tree where that actually comes from who and what that is because it has been changed and it is now uh, uh, this kind of fruit tree. It's uh, We've been changed by the power of the Holy Spirit and God has done a work in us. So I want to just kind of center our hearts and minds as we read Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 22 through 26. And it says this, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives because we've yielded, because he's then producing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading or stay in step with the Spirit in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. We've said that there is one fruit with nine aspects or characteristics, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. And Paul says there is no law or limit to these fruits of the Spirit. For us, if there's no, there is no limit to the nine aspects of the, let me just, speak it correctly, fruit of the Spirit, singular. And I just have been reminding us, and we'll see it again today in the text that we're going to be at. Verse 26 is so key. We don't, we don't like conquer love or joy or peace or gentleness and then begin to go, look at how gentle I am, right? It was hilarious. I, last week, I uh, left out of the service and uh, Ellie walked by no, Aubrey walked by and uh, and I said, hey, Aubrey, wh what did you learn uh, over there in kids? And she said, uh, we uh, we talked about humility. And I said, well, how good are you at it? And she said, uh, kind of good. Uh, and I said, I'm glad you're or, or I'm working on it or something like that. I said, I'm glad you didn't say I'm perfect at it. I said, or else we would have had to go to the, hum the humility lesson again. Right. Pride and humility. Right. And, and listen, we're working on these things. We don't let this uh, man. I'm really I was really faithful this week. I want to tell you about it, right? Man, I was really loving this week. No, like it's not something that puffs us up or provokes us or we begin to be jealous of one another's love or peace or patience or kindness or gentleness. But we trust that the Lord is working as he works in our lives. So some of you, you're, I've said, you're naturally patient and just patience comes, right? Others of you are like, patience is not, um, you know, we, we would say this, patient is, is not my virtue, but I want to tell you, Patience lives inside of you with the Holy Spirit. And so we have opportunity to gain access, but we're all on different journeys, walking this different life and figuring out how God is beginning to turn and move and allow us to live wholeheartedly. So we're going to be in Galatians chapter 6, 11 through 16, and we're going to be talking about peace. And here's our truth for this morning. Jesus brings peace through the cross. Jesus brings peace through through the cross. As we look uh, at this letter of Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter 6, 11 through 16, 
join with me. Uh, I'll read it out loud and, uh, and you can read along in your copy or it'll be on the screen. It says this, notice what large letters I use as I write these closing words in my own handwriting. So this is Paul writing and uh, typically he had someone that was writing for him and they would, he would just kind of share what he wanted to say and they would kind of write it. But he takes a letter and he's like, hey, I want to show you that I'm writing this to you. Uh, there's some people that say that he, you know, it was all caps, right? Uh, like he was the guy that in, in text messages capitalizes everything or emails. Uh, or or it was that he had possibly a, a disease with his eyes that he couldn't see. And so he had to write it big so that he could. But he's like, listen, I want to tell you this is me and I'm writing it with my own uh, words and my own handwriting. He says this, those who are trying to force you to be circumcised want to look good to others. They don't want to be persecuted for teaching that the cross of Christ alone can save. We know that that's the only way we can be saved is by Jesus Christ taking the cross on our behalf. And even those who advocate circumcision don't keep the whole law themselves. They only want you to be circumcised so they can boast, keyword in this passage, about it and claim you as their disciples. As for me, May I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of that cross, my interest in this world has been crucified, and the world's interest in me has also died. It doesn't matter whether we have been circumcised or not. What counts is whether we have been transformed into a new creation. May God's peace and mercy be upon all who live by this principle. They are are the new people of God. They're new creations in Christ Jesus. Now, as we kind of look at this book of Galatians, we've said if we can find the fruit of the Spirit, the word that is used there in Galatians, that that's where we're going to go. And so just kind of reminding you, Paul is writing to two very different types of people, the legalists uh, and the libertines, the law people and the freedom people. We have law people in this room, like you follow everything, right? You won't you won't put the car in reverse before you put that seatbelt on. You know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, there's others of us who are like, I'm like halfway down the driveway and Ann's like, are you going to put your seatbelt on? I said, I've got a pattern. I've got a rhythm here. Like I'm turning, I'm, I'm pushing the button to close the garage door. Then I'm putting it over, right? I'm, I'm making sure I get past the car that's right there. Like some of you are just like, you're like, woo, you know, like, and you're like, if you don't wear a seatbelt, we need to have a conversation. Can we do that? Like you need to wear your seatbelt. That, that's part of everything you should be doing, right? There's, uh, but there's law and freedom. And listen, Paul is saying this, hey, if you want to live at peace, if you want to really run after God, then you need to know that the Spirit comes not through religion, uh, law, or total freedom, but through a relationship with a God who gave his only son. That's what he says in this passage. If you want peace, uh, live by the Spirit and know that the Spirit comes not through religion. He talks a lot about circumcision in this passage, not a circumcision of the heart, but the circumcision of the flesh, an outward physical thing. The, 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 the legalists are all about what you can see on the outside. And uh, Jesus spoke to that, right? He's like, hey, you, you clean up the outside, but on the inside, it's still the same, right? Uh, Jesus talks to him, he calls them whitewashed tombs, right? I mean, uh, he's saying, listen, you can make Make the, you can make the, the gravestone look really, really nice, but you know what's still there? A bunch of dead bones, right? And so he's talking, listen, it doesn't come through this religion, but then he's also saying, listen, hey, it doesn't come through just having total freedom, but it's a relationship being created and made new by living on the cross. And this peace comes to those who are new creations in Christ. Second Corinthians 5, 17. If you need a verse to memorize, it's a great one, right? We are new creations in Christ Jesus is what he says. The old has passed, the new has come. And now because of that, we are new creations in Christ. With the new creation, he says, our interest in the world fades that sinful nature fades. It's not taken away, right? We've said that over this series. It's still in a battle with the spirit, but it, the, our interest in the world fades. And verse 14 says, not only does the world doesn't have a hold on me, but I don't want to hold on to it either, right? The world doesn't have a hold of me either, but I don't want to hold on to it. And so those who are new creations in Christ Jesus are, are p patterned and paired up, centered on the cross of Jesus Christ, just like we just did as we took the Lord's Supper. We're going to center our lives on the cross. And we boast only, Paul says, in the cross of Jesus Christ. This peace we are talking about isn't like um, what we hear often in this world. We just want 
world peace. Uh, I didn't uh, put the Miss Congeniality clip on the TV for you. If you're too young, you're too young. You uh, uh, you don't even know what I'm talking about. But you know, all the all the all the people are like world peace, world peace, world peace. And then she gives this long statement, and then like people are like, huh, what? And then she goes world peace, and people go, yeah, right. It's this is not it's not the beauty pageant answer, right? Uh, oh, we want world peace. Like, listen, Jesus made the connection here to the cross. He, he made the connection of peace and mercy to the cross and the new creation that comes from that cross. And I just want to tell you, the cross is brutal, right? The cross was brutal. Uh, there were people who were divided at the moment in which uh, Barabbas and Jesus are there. And they're like, hey, who should we free? And they're like, free Barabbas. Like the murderer, the, the, the stealer, the cheat, the thief. Free him, not the king of the Jews, right? And, and these are the same people that are yelling, crucify, crucify, who were laying down their coats and like uh, worshiping him as he entered in on Palm Sunday. Listen, the, the people were divided and there was not a peace at the cross, right? There's not this like world peace thought process of there's, everything's just okay. It's going to just all be okay and fine. Journey with me to Jesus's words in the Gospels in Luke and Matthew. And he really kind of helps us understand this idea of peace that you and I can have in the cross. He says this in Luke chapter 12, 51 through 53. This is red letters in my Bible. Jesus speaking. Do you think I've come to bring peace to earth? To which we would all say, for sure, Jesus, you're going to bring peace to earth. And he says, no, I've not come. Uh, no, I've come to divide people against each other. From now on, families will be split apart, three in favor of me and two against, or two in favor and three against. Father will be divided against son and son against father. Great Father's Day message, Frank. Thanks. Uh, mother against daughter and daughter against mother and mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. I mean, he, he says it. Listen, they, did, Jesus, didn't you come to bring peace? He's like, no, I didn't come to bring peace. But turn with me to Matthew uh, chapter 10 uh, in verse 34. And it says, uh, it says this, uh, don't imagine that I came to bring peace to earth. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. What? Jesus, like, th this doesn't seem to be uh, approaching what I, what I think about you. Uh, but this is reality. This is real Jesus, right? I've come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Uh, your enemies will be right in your own household. If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you're not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you're not worthy of being mine. If you ref refuse to take up your cross, Jesus ties peace and the cross together. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. I just want to tell you, you may be like, Frank, this is not a very peaceful message that you're giving to us today. But I want to tell you that this peace is not just the absence of war. It's not the absence of conflict. It's not the absence of anything that turns over the apple cart. But it is peace in the storm. It is peace in the war. It is peace in the battle. Peace in the middle of the craziness, right? Uh, when all, uh, uh, all eight of your children are running around the house and you're like, ah, <laughs> like there's got to be a time, right? Uh, there's a couple books out there. There's, well, there's one book out there and we're just going to kind of, uh, there's some books out on the table uh, at the first impressions counter there, or first impressions table. And we're going to, I'm kind of getting some books that uh, you can take and read and bring back and take and read and bring back. That way we can kind of just, if you want a book about prayer, one's out there, grab it, take it, read it, bring it back, put it on the table and we'll uh, recycle it to use it. It'd be great. Um, but there's, uh, the, in the book, there's this example of uh, John and Charles Wesley's mother who had 10 kids. And uh, she was like, I just, I want, she was a prayer warrior. And she's like, I needed some time. And so she would put on <laughs> like her apron to be cooking and get things ready. And when she wanted to have prayer meeting time, you know what she'd do? She'd put that apron over her head. And those kids knew we ain't bothering mama, right? Mama will come unglued in this moment. I'll never forget as long as I live. I'll never forget as long as I live um, sitting with my grandmother who's a prayer warrior 
we'd spend the night, we'd sleep in her bed, and she'd start saying her prayers, and we'd be like, Graham, you done yet? Nope, still praying. Like, fell, I'd fall asleep, right? It's like 25, maybe it was her plan. Uh, I don't know, but 25 <laughs> minutes later, Graham, are you still praying? Yeah, I'm still praying, I'm still praying. And here, here's the deal, right? We don't, we don't pray, we don't seek the Lord because everything is perfect. We pray, we seek the Lord, we have peace in our lives when everything is in chaos. Why? Because we know that the God who allows the chaos in our lives is right with us. And not only is he outside of us, but he has deposited his spirit in our lives that gives us peace. And if we will yield to him, that there's a moment where peace will rise up. So if you're here today and you've believed in Jesus Christ, all the peace you need lives inside of you. you say, Frank, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know where I've been. You don't know where I am. You don't know where I'm going. And I, I, and I want to say, I probably don't. And I want to walk alongside you. I want to encourage you. But guess what? Here's the cooler thing. You don't need me. Yeah, it's great to have a pastor that loves and cares for you. And I want to do that. I don't want to walk alongside you. But the cool thing is, is you've got someone who is even better than any one of us in this room already living inside of you. And he wants to walk alongside you and encourage you. Listen, this peace, this peace with God is is unreal. It's peace with God. It's peace with yourself and peace with others, even amid the chaos, in the middle of the chaos, in the mess. He is with you. He is seeking you. He is loving you. Listen, in a world, like I said earlier, riddled with anxiety, I, I, would, I would almost gather that, that most kids in schools, you ask them, what's, what's the biggest thing? They're just anxious. They're anxious people, right? Uh, it's just anxiety that is that is riddled our current culture. And with that, we need to give them the message and walk alongside them and help them to know that Jesus is the peace that passes all understanding. And peace isn't the absence of, con absence of conflict, but in knowing who is in control of the conflict while we are in it. That we don't have to be in that control. We don't have to sit in that seat. That he didn't desire us to sit in that seat. I want to read Philippians chapter 4, uh, 6 through 9 for us this morning as we uh, kind of just close up and we finish up this morning and we kind of like land the plane about what it looks like for peace to rule and reign in our hearts and lives. Philippians 4, 6 through 9, it says this. Uh, don't worry about anything. Some of you, you're like, what? Frank? That's the most ridiculous and stupid idea you've ever said. So I didn't say it. Paul said it. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts emotions, right? And your minds. I think that's kind of where a lot of the anxiety comes from. He will, he will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. How do we live in Christ Jesus? We yield to the Holy Spirit. Verse eight. And now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me. That's Paul speaking. Everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. I don't know if you're sitting in the room today and you're thinking, that's easy to say, easy to read, but hard to live out. Then I would say that verse, uh, those verses need to be somewhere um, uh, posted for you. They need to be visual for you. You need to see them on the regular. If you say, Frank, uh, that, that verse gives me anxiety just to read that because I'm thinking about how uh, some people get it easily and blah, 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 and they do this and that. Listen, that verse not just needs to be somewhere where you can physically see it. It needs to be memorized and it needs to be stuck down in you deeply. 
so that you know that when, when all the craziness comes up, that you recognize that, that all we need to do, all we need to do is not worry. We need to pray. We need to tell him what we need and thank him for all he has done. And then you will experience uh, God's peace. Now, here's the, here's the thing. We need to be careful to want God's peace. We, we need to be careful to not want God's peace without wanting to surrender or die to the God of peace, right? We have to be careful to want God's peace without wanting to surrender or die to the God of peace. When peace and mercy come, we realize this is what Paul did in Galatians chapter six. He connected peace and mercy to the cross. When peace and mercy come, we realize that they are needed for us to be living in this world, to balance our faith so that we can live and understand what he has done for us. This is a reminder, right? We don't want to go, oh, I got all this peace. I got this mercy and then boast. But the warning is is that we continue to walk faithfully day by day, resting in him. Remember, our truth for the day is this. Jesus brings peace through the cross. Jesus brings peace through the cross. So the question as we finish up this morning is, how well do you live peacefully? How well do you live peacefully? Knowing that peace comes through the cross, the cross is a denial of self, and this denial of self comes when I crucify my interest in this world, and the denial of self comes when this world's interest in me has also died. I read this quote about uh, self-denial and the cross this week by Bill Hull. It says this, when Jesus referred to self-denial, he was not talking about denying ourselves a luxury item or denying the reality of self or the needs of self, right? He's not saying take just these things out of your life. Rather, he was focusing on the importance of renouncing self as the center of our life and our actions. In other words, self-denial is the decision of each of his followers to give over to God his or her body, career, money, and time. It is us saying, Frank Angelo Valenzano III is not the main character of his own life, right? That's it for you. You insert your name and say, I am not the main character of my own life. Who's the main character of your life? Jesus Christ and him crucified. Jesus Christ and him crucified. And when we understand that peace comes through the cross of Jesus Christ because we are made new creation him, we can live at peace with him. And then we can put into action Philippians chapter four. Not working for our salvation, right? No, never. But working out of our salvation, knowing that peace has been deposited in our lives. So I would ask you this morning, are you at peace with God? Are you at peace with God? I'm not talking about, are you at perfect peace? Like, just turn the news on. Don't turn the news on, really, right? Um, But you look out and you're like, this is a wreck. We live in a wreck of a world. When I start looking out, I got to always look in, right? Because I'm like, ugh. And I've given to that wreck, right? Like I've helped it be even more of a wreck for a long time in my life. I was, I was a disaster. And even still today, sometimes I, I mess up and I make, uh, uh, you know, I make dumb decisions and sin is a part of my life. I'm not saying, I'm not saying, are you at peace with God? Cause you're perfect. I'm saying, are you at peace with God? Because you've yielded your life to him. There's only one way to have peace with God. And that is believing in his sent son, Jesus. The only way we can have peace with God, true peace on this earth, is believing in his sent son, Jesus. I'll never forget, as long as I live, I had a neighbor one time and he looked at me and I, he, I mean, ever, you know, when you're a neighbor with a pastor, you kind of, it's like four meetings in, right? And you're like, hey, what do you do? And you're like, well, I'm just going to do this thing. And, uh, and they're like, oh, okay. And I'll never forget, he clearly looked at me and he said, yeah, um, me and God kind of have a deal. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't say that, but in my mind, I was intrigued. I was like, what? He's like, you know, I kind of do my thing. I let him do his thing. Uh, we kind of let our kids in this. You know, my wife took my kids to church and kind of she does her thing. And we kind of allowed this, but like, just kind of, I won't, you know, I won't do the big things. I won't do the big 10 and, and I'll stay faithful and I'll be kind of a good guy. That's kind of the deal that I got. And, uh. Man, over the years, we've been able to love and minister and care and just encourage. Um, 
And I don't, just to be honest, like his idea never changed, but we were able to serve and love his family well. I wish it would have changed. But I want to tell you that there are no deals outside of the deal that's already been given, which is Jesus has been given for you. If I had a million dollars up here, which I don't, if I had a million dollars up here and I said, all you got to do is receive it. All you got to do is put your hands out and receive it. Like, and, and somebody did not receive it, we'd all go, that person's a weirdo, right? Like if I just called one person and said, hey, I got this million dollars for you, Addison, come receive it. And Addison just, he's like, I don't want it. And I was like, I can only give it to Addison in this room. And he's like, no, I don't want it. For the, for the audio, Rachel said we are one, so she would receive it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but we would all, we would all be like, what's the matter with that dude? And listen, I don't claim to know where you are today. But, but you, you may be standing on the outside and you may not have peace be, with God because you have not believed in him. And there's no way for you to have world peace in your life, right? Quote, world peace in your life because you've not received him. I want to tell you today, believe in Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Believe that he is. Well, Frank, I don't understand this, this, or this, or this. Listen, I want to tell you, there's a lot that I don't understand, but here's what you need to do. You got to close your eyes. You got to take a step of faith and believe that Jesus is who he says he is. And I want to tell you, belief in Jesus is as simple as A, B, and C. A, admit that you're a sinner. Many of us in this room, we would that would not be a hard, uh, hard step for us to admit that we're sinners. The hard step is go from, from A to B, which is believe that Jesus is who he says he is, that he lived, he died, he was buried. He lived a perfect, sinless life. He was the perfect son, right? There was no moment in which he had to say, Dad, uh, I used to do this, and I just want to tell you, Happy Father's Day, right? Nope, uh-uh, he was perfect. In every way, he was tempted and tried in every way that we are, yet without sin. We need to believe on that Jesus, that he is today, not dead, not on a cross, not in a tomb, but he is resurrected and he is sitting at the right hand of God and he's praying for you. And we need to believe in that Jesus. And then we need to confess our sin and confess and commit our lives to him. A, B, C, admit, believe, confess. But I want to tell you today, and that's a huge step that somebody might need to make, but a lot of us in this room have already made that. But I want to tell you today, the same way that we do that step is the same way that we continue tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day, that we continue to walk in faith with Jesus the same exact way by admitting, God, I've, I've kind of walked this way. Lord, I, I, sometimes I just don't believe what you say about peace, right? Just you say you can give it to me. And sometimes I'm still making a list and checking it twice and putting the things back on. And I'm, I'm crazy about what's going to happen this week, Lord, when I'm totally out of control of it. And so God, today, I'm just going to pray. I'm going to thank you. And I'm going to experience what you've got for me. And God's peace will be given by the God of peace. And we will walk in him. Admit, believe, confess, and commit. Listen, I'm telling you, we got a lot of work to do in peace, right? It's like, Lord, these fruit of the spirits, fruit of the spirit. I want to make sure I, that I say it correctly. Not spirits, plural. Fruit, singular, of the spirit, him, Holy Spirit, singular. Lord, we got work to do. We got work to do. And when we say that, that work is actually yielding. And it's non-work, Right? It is work out your salvation with fear and trembling work, but it is non-work as in like, we don't have to hustle and get after peace this week. We need to yield to the God of peace. I don't know about you, um, but we all have work to do in this area. Some of you, you're, champion, you're peace champions. You bring peace where you go. You, you have peace with God. You have peace with yourself and you have peace with others. Others of us, man, we got work to do as we, uh, raise up peace in our own lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. So I want to pray for us this week. And I want to know, I want you, I want you to know, as soon as you say, God, I want to live in this and I want to take Philippians 4, 6 or 9, I'm going to post it somewhere, I'm going to do, man, all hell will break loose in your life. I'm just going to tell you, 
It's, I mean, right? I mean, it, I say it to everybody who chooses to believe, who chooses to be baptized. Like this week is not going to be an easy week, right? When you choose to make a next step in Jesus, Satan is angry. All hell is, 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 is against you. Whatever next step that is. So just trust that, God, you're with me, even in the chaos, and you can bring peace, right? And I want to, like, this morning, just want you to know, like, um, remember the, uh, it's a frank thought, uh, random, uh, crazy thought. Remember the guy that used to be on the commercial um, for hair loss, right? Uh, 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 hair club for men, and he's like, I'm not only the uh, the president, I'm a the client, yeah. And um, sorry. I, <laughs> sorry. thanks, thanks, Nick, for helping. I mean, that's good. But um, uh, like, I hope and pray that you know I may be the deliverer of the message, but I'm not just um, the pastor. I'm a fellow traveler on the journey. And my heart's cry for all of us is that peace would rule and reign so that we would be people of peace wherever we set our foot and that we would then, like like crazy, begin to see people coming to faith in Jesus Christ because we have peace that passes all understanding. Um, I was convicted this week about praying big prayers, believing God to do unreal things. And I want us to pray big prayers for what he wants to do in our lives this week as we walk in peace. Would you join me as we pray? Father, Lord, we we just recognize that God, this world does not have peace. Much of it is due to that they are not new creations in Christ Jesus. Father, some of it is due to us who are new creations in Christ Jesus allowing the unrest to take over part of our lives. And so, Father, today, convict us, challenge us, remove, take things from us, Lord, that that we need to be taken out of our lives. God, we just want to yield to you, to your power and to your presence so that the peace of God will be given to us by the God of peace. And that, Lord, we could do nothing but overflow with thankfulness for what you have done and that we would then live this week. Father, some in this room to this week, um, they're going literally to have peace, to rest, to go on vacation. God, I pray that you would grant them the peace that passes all understanding. Others, our Lord, are, are, I'm thinking about uh, starting new jobs, starting new journeys. Lord, it's the busiest week in some people's jobs. It's the craziest time of the summer as they're trying to balance family and work and all the things. God, Lord, you know every one of us. Lord, you say you know the hairs on our head. You have them numbered. And so, Lord, I just pray that your peace would guide us, and that, Lord, you would deliver us to peace. And so, Lord, today, may we not work for it, but may we yield to your spirit, Lord, which is honestly sometimes harder than working for the peace. And so, God, help us to slow down long enough to hear your voice and to heed your voice. God, today we praise you, Lord, we praise you for the opportunity to take the Lord's Supper. We praise you for the opportunity to sing, to gather, to encourage one another. Lord, we praise you for what you're doing in and through us. And God, we look forward to, to what you're going to do, but Lord, we also celebrate what you are doing and what you have done. We love you and we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen.